meadow, to the meadow, to the meadow. <laughs> and the, the pun is intended towards Aurora's song. Love is wild. To that song. So let's go. sit somewhere at the water and like eat the salad that I just bought and uh, yeah let's, let's see where this will bring me <laughs> found my spot next to the blue flower and under that beautiful tree the best spot in Singapore. <laughs> right. the buddy came to join me. For my food. Hey, buddy. How are you doing? You okay? I want some food right now, and I just smell your food, and it's vegan, and it's delicious. my lesson to get cold fresh food. I almost wanted to go down to the food court to get like hot food and like super cooked and oil and stuff because I didn't I looked for vegan restaurants but there was just none and I ended up in an Italian restaurant and they had like vegan friendly food and it's so good and we're both enjoying like we're both enjoying More birds have joined the party. <laughs> oh my god, I just made a beautiful sound. Wow. Can you do that again? Can you do it again? I'm someone who never grew up in a city. When I was four years old, each Wednesday after my elementary dismissal, my mother would bring me to the nearest by animal reserve for me to see the goats, deers, chickens, lambs, and sometimes even peacocks. Maybe they are partners. She told me when I was older that I begged her to be with them, and it was later in my life I discovered my deep connection and fascination to animals. I'm quite sure they will do it again. Especially when they are near each other, they will start doing it. Oh wait, look, look, look. The big boy is coming again. Oh, maybe it's like an intruder sound when that one is around. I've spoken repeatedly in my vlogs about sensing their emotions, as all animals have them like we do and our ability to communicate telepathically. Now these are all abilities we naturally possess when we remain open and sensitive to our own intuition and subtle inner voice. Because many humans refuse to slow down and adjust to nature's pace and its harmony, people lose their receptiveness and become out of touch with nature's essence therefore themselves. It was through meditation and raising a cat in Peru where she re-taught me how to whisper with animals again. With sadness she had shown me memories telepathically of her upbringing under a bridge two blocks away from her hostel where she parted ways with her mother and older brother leaving her to find a new home and thankfully ended up at this hostel. Countless of times she would come to my room whenever I would call her during my meditations and others in this hostel were truly fascinated by this. All animals know how to do this and they can be great teachers if we are willing to observe their ways, become curious and listen very, very closely. Oh, 
another very interesting phenomenon. <laughs> The interesting it's just another beautiful language that we just don't really understand they should they should they really want more they're starting to come really like really near me and they made like all this beautiful sound like like that it's just super cool i just wish i could document like all the different kinds of sounds that they're making like i literally heard like 10 different kinds of sounds Join the game. Hey buddy. What's up? This is something very typical an emotional person would say. But I feel like my life has literally begun now. Looking at all these wonderful trees. And I'm just in love again. It's such a tough day today. It was tough to an extent that my emotions were so like there and wild. But I could barely open my eyes to like see the sunlight. Like that was like how how disassociated I was with like the reality around me. Like I was just purely in my emotions, you know. <laughs> my tarot reader, and the tarot reader is one who like reads like the energies of like the cards that like present themselves according to of the person who is actually getting like tarot session. And it said that if I would drop all these burdens and it like reach like a ten. So I had like a lot of weight on my shoulders and I literally felt like that. It, it felt like that for the past few days. Like my hand, my, my right hand got like super painful and I was just like in survival mode again, like literally running around for like a soft place, which is obviously like nowhere to be found outside of me except within myself. And um, yeah, I'm finally like feeling like, oh, the 10 of cups is, it's here. Magnetized I am to water. Like I just don't want to leave water. Just walk this way to get a little bit out of the city. It's looking really nice here. Telling to just lay down in the grass. Still have to go up there one time. It's so good. It's so good to be here. I was just thinking. I have three more days here in Singapore or at least that's the amount of days I booked for my hotel but for now I really feel like just enjoying this view and just contemplate I'm really thinking of getting a Segway tomorrow and visit like two areas that are like more chill and laid back more rural laid back out of the fast a city places. It smells 
so good here. These are all the flowers. I just love flowers. Like, I just hope I can smell them and that they won't say things like, What are you doing? Look at that! Look at those bees. so good here and it kind of reminds me of a Dutch coffee shop <laughs> I've been smelling this plant from meters like this is such a this one smells it smells really good the best remedy for heartbreak <laughs> go to flowers and, and smell flowers What does it mean? Uh, it means sandal. What? Sandal. What? Center? Sandal. 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 Chandal. Oh, it's okay. means sandal. Like this? Uh, no, it's a uh, um, medicine, you would say. Okay. So, yeah, the Ayurvedic medicine. Ah, the Ayurvedic medicine. Mm. Chandal. Interesting. I didn't know that. Ah, sandal. Sandal. Right. It was lovely meeting that person, but I just do feel like I need to be alone again. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> All right, so I still really want to go up there. It's just I'm feeling a little bit tired now, so I'm going to look for a spot to just lie down, recharge, and then I'll go up. I found a relatively okay spot. It's just I still feel the energy of all the other people that like walk by here. <sighs> I have to like continue further a little and find a spot that feels collective energy human free. <laughs> As someone who is quite the pretty sensitive to energy, especially from other people, I've needed to establish strong boundaries with others and give myself the permission to take lots of space to recharge, just so I can come back to myself again. For sensitive people, or so-called clairsentients, it can be easy to get lost in other people, their emotions and what they are going through which at times they're probably not even aware of themselves. Clairsentients are kind of like antennas or sponges. Just to give you one story, one day I did groceries in the Netherlands and felt an agonizing pain in my right ear. I was shocked to then realize it wasn't mine. I then turned around to see behind me an old man with a big hearing device plugged into his right ear. For years now, I cannot sleep with other people in the same room, not even my partners or friends. I would wake up exhausted as them, not myself. This is not by any means a burden, but rather a superpower to be able to empathize and understand how other people feel. To sense the energies of rooms, places, powerful places, and even entire countries. However, it needs to be harnessed healthily as a valid aspect of our being and to treat it like any other part of our physical body in order to help others. This body really needs a lot of maintenance. <laughs> I have to pee again. But I don't want to leave. But I need to leave. <laughs> Flowing water! Emotions! Oh. <laughs> for my hotel checkout swollen lip again for some reason <laughs> emotions I will be leaving soon I think I know where because it's repeating in my mind since yesterday the place where I initially wanted to go but maybe I wasn't supposed to be there yet uh, but it feels like it now I'm just gonna sleep more <laughs>
insects suddenly annoy you when life just doesn't go according to your plan in general. It's life trying to grab your attention. It's consciousness. It's literally your ancestors trying to help you refocus towards the things that really matter. bought two microphones and now I will go to the second floor to get like an adapter so uh, yeah let's go you know those creative one-on-one -on -one dialogue videos between like the same person and the same person we've all seen these kind of creative videos that have just come out of somebody's imagination get attention and the reason why is because they came up with it from their unique imagination my question was how do they come up with it so consistently and stand out so much so i made a course that guides you step by step into creating these kind of videos from your imagination act them out and gain a loyal community of fans that cannot have enough of you our imagination is the key to create a life where our innermost creative force, our inner child, is the center of it. Dear creators, I wasn't always like this. It's because I reclaimed being imaginative, it enabled me to ruthlessly step into my confidence and create meaningful work artistically on a daily basis while gathering an audience. I made this self-paced course financially accessible to everyone. And I just really want to show you through this course how fun it can actually be to storytell, to script write, to act out and create these videos that actually conspire so many other people to do the same. Check the link or DM me for more information as to why this course is the gateway to step into your full potential as a creator, to consistently and confidently create, get attention and have fun by creating again. See you inside. Singing, yeah. Oh, singing, yeah. Yes, my kids are my Yeah. Don't come, do you come to see it? Mic? Yeah, it's perfect. Oh, yeah, unbox it, correct? Yeah, it's a big heavy mic. Yeah, heavy mic, correct. Right? Then I think I think you need a very strong a very on top of it. Uh -huh. yeah. I don't think they I don't think they come with a cable. They only come no, with a, no yeah, cable, no cable, yeah. Cable. I have to get the cable. Yeah, yeah cable I sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I honestly never thought I would end up singing, playing the piano or producing music. I just never thought music was my path in general. Life truly has so much to offer if we are willing to stand in our sovereignty, our strength and take that responsibility to go out into the world and try. Many end up giving their power away, their happiness away, to a belief that there is a source of power outside of them that is going to deliver everything that they wish for. Nobody knows what they're doing and there will be many times we need to push through that fear of failing before even trying. I've been feeling to go to Thailand. Then when I booked the ticket to Thailand, you guys already know, I've detoured me here. I just don't know what to f do. But now I still feel cold to go there. It makes me feel tired and just not at home at all. This is not where I belong, like. And I don't want to panic book again. I want to really be sure this time. I took a whole day to get to the clarity I needed to make my final decision. If you're someone who experiences a lot of emotions, it's important to ride the waves, explore the perspectives and information on the way before making big decisions. The clarity had stroke and I booked a ticket. I just packed all my stuff so incredibly fast, like so fast. <laughs> 
to check out now. I have to leave literally in four minutes out of my room. Right, we made it to the airport again. It's a little bit traumatizing because this is literally where I was the last time. Where they told me I couldn't depart like this flight that I'm going to take. It's literally the same one, it's just that I booked it again. So I'm looking for the Bangkok Airways now. It's supposed to be here, but I don't think it's here yet, so I might have to wait a little bit. So I'm only allowed to bring 10 kilos with me, excluding my guitar. So that means that with this bag, I'm only allowed to bring 10 kilos. So the option is with this flight, I have a separate carry-on, which I can basically put like a lot of stuff in. So I'm thinking to just put a whole load of clothes out of this bag into that bag so I can just check it in without worrying because if I would check that bag in like all my camera stuff and microphones it just doesn't feel right for me and I don't think it's safe to like have that like check into like the big like rumble down by the airport you know so so yeah we're getting there here to there all right so it's basically this metal metal weight thing that like weighs a lot so i'm very happy to put that in there <laughs> this is looking so good <laughs> now this bad boy i'm gonna wrap this up in a lot of clothes uh, later i can just put everything back in put everything back in my normal bag in. I don't know how I feel about that. I am such a genius. <laughs> I'm gonna use this like as a case protector padding for in my bag because this is like, super soft. So this is the new protection. You've gotta be a little creative. No obstacle is big enough for me. I just took this from my MacBook and I'm gonna put that right there. Look at that, perfect. Alright, I managed to get six kilos in this thing. <laughs> Look at that! Just as I thought I was ready. The zipper is broken. The problem has increased. It's never happened to this bag before. Right. We're now here and we're going to tape it. <laughs> this shit doesn't work. Okay, okay cool. So one bag all the way to go somewhere. This is your seat, it's a window seat. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Alright, we made it through. It was a little bit stressful, but I was like, nah, everything is going to be fine. And I literally checked this quote from one of my favorite philosophers and basically someone who just spent almost in his entire life to like understanding what life means and is J. Krishna Murti. And he said, My formula to happiness is that I just don't care what happens. And I was just like, oh, I don't really care what happens, you know, like, I'll be fine anyway. And even despite the way that I interpret the process is literally me giving meaning to it. So in the end, it was just, everything was just fine anyway. All right, we made it through. I think I'm going to go for a subway because they just have like the most fresh fruit at times. So uh, let's go. Right, I just changed the last Singapore money that I had and I changed it to Thai baht, um, which is the currency in Thailand. Hopefully I will arrive so I can make use of it this time. Um, heading to gate C16 now. Ever since I remember traveling with my parents, we experienced several times missing our flights, leading me to soak in the very reactions of resentment of not being able to board. For that reason, I grew up fearful of being denied boarding or that I'd be too late and miss my flight, even if I'd be on time, 
my mind would portray anxious scenarios of distrust to life, showing that the way we perceive instances as existential or that things are just bound to go wrong are all projections from what we have always known to be true in the past. It is our mind's way to ensure we remain existing, however, can be far from a different, more truthful reality, which can be repainted in any present moment now. I will never forget the story of an angry villager who came to the Buddha and got very angry at the Buddha, screaming and insulting him, confused why he is not reacting in return. Instead of responding with anger, the Buddha listened patiently to the villager's grievances until all the anger was diffused, demonstrating the power of patience and understanding. Similarly, when we remain patient with ourselves, with a willingness to understand each side of ourselves and the situation, our anxious parts may remember again the very peaceful nature of who we really are, which is the more truthful reality. Finally! <laughs> Go on. Uh, so the room is actually like quite nice for like the price that I'm paying. Like I'm paying, I'm paying literally like three times less than I did per night in Singapore. So it's always good when you know, it's actually like, quite pleasant. Free water, I hope. And the bathroom is actually quite, quite nice. So I'm just going to lay down and rest. Later, I will go out. Make sure you subscribe so we can stay in touch as in my next vlog things take a surprising turnaround. I've really learned that opening the heart again is like such a sacred process that just cannot be rushed at all. Life brought me to a smaller island next to where I arrived at where magic happened after magic. I met up with new people and quickly partnered up with a friend. They gave us, instead of like a, a birthday cake, they gave me an extra salad, <laughs> which I had to like blow out from the candles. So yeah, I'm, I'm super grateful. I think we're both grateful. I wow, think. there was an intense day. This is a good, good, uh, good reward. Yeah. <laughs>
the ocean and the beauty of Thai local food. And so it is. We shared similar values on creating a community together, leading us on a property hunt around the island and unforgettable adventures. <laughs> so see how that turns out, and I'll see you next time. Okay? Delicious? Oh yeah. <laughs> It's um, vegan. This is really? So let's see how they did it. Macadamia, that's quite um, original. I don't know if they put wheat. Oh, you know, it's gluten free. So no, I don't think they put wheat. I think zucchini layers. Oh, so wow. How does it smell? Does it smell a little bit good? Or? It smells like. Uh, <laughs> Orgasmic smell, put it in the mouth.